Hi, we're in GIMP here, look, this is GNU Image Manipulation Program and it's free to download and we're going to use it to take a freshly stacked image from Deep Sky Stacker and make it look pretty. So first of all, I'm going to open that file. I think it's, it's going to be a TIFF for a start, I think it's this one here. Right, let's make that a bit bigger, so go to view, zoom and I think we'll go to 25%, fill the screen a bit more. As you can see, there's not much detail in there, and that's because when you've stacked a load of long exposures in Deep Sky Stacker, for example, you've not pulled out all that detail yet, it's just stacked them together. You've got all the information there, but you just need to pull it out. And this is an example of a bit of software that can do that. Some people pay for PixInsight, which is probably much better. This is probably quite basic in comparison, but there's quite a few people that use GIMP and it's probably a good place to start as well with it being free and quite simple to use. So if you're starting out, this might be the one for you. So a bit of an explanation. This on the right hand side is called the histogram and we need to pay very careful attention to this. That's really important. We don't want that big spiky thing going all the way to the left, all the way to the right. This axis on the bottom here represents shades from black to white and this spike is the distribution of those shades of black to white in our image and we're going to keep a careful eye on that to make sure we don't do anything wrong. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the colour tab, go to levels and we can see we've got another histogram here and if we click on value we can see the histogram for individual red, green and blue channels and they're all sitting in the same place so I don't think I need to tweak the color balance just yet so I'm going to click back on value so I can manipulate all the different channels as one and let's line that up over here so you can see a bit better if I grab that little arrow there and drag it down you can see how it's made the background and the galaxy go a bit brighter and if we click on split view, we can see that difference. I think the split view is a really important thing to keep looking at because it lets you immediately see your changes. I'm gonna keep that. And I'm gonna do another iteration of levels. So again, I'm just gonna bring the background down and the highlights up split screen it make sure I'm happy hit OK and maybe one more iteration of that It's okay to apply it and at this point in time we can see how the image has changed. We've got this black thing here and we've got black in the corners. Now that's because when I stacked my images in Deep Sky Stacker I only used light frames which are the long exposures you, you take to capture the object. Now, there's different types of frames, and probably the second most important is something called flat frames. And I won't go into what flat frames are, but basically if you take them, you can remove this gradient, this vignetting from bright to dark in the corners, and this thing here, which is a bit of dust on the sensor or in the optical path somewhere on a, on a glass corrector or somewhere, and that's called a dust bunny. Nothing to do with bunnies, but that's the name that people call it. So as I'm just using light frames for this tutorial, I'm kind of up against it. So if we can get a good image, we're doing well. Now to get round this vignetting, there's two techniques I can use. I can intentionally black clip my histogram, which is something you wouldn't normally want to do because you're getting rid of inf information that way. 
and the other way to do it is to crop round the galaxy which has kind of got two benefits really because as we can see at the moment our galaxy M33 the Triangulum Galaxy is just sitting in a sea of stars and although that, that, that can be a really good look and I like that we could actually just make this a bit more in your face by cropping it and it gets rid of this vignetting so I'll clip, click on the crop tool there left click, drag and I don't want to get that dust bunny involved so I'll make sure I stop clear of that and I can just left click and move that where I want and to apply it click top left and now still got a bit of gradient there but and there and in the corners but I'm going to show you a trick at the end out of GIMP just using the Windows viewer to do a kind of reverse vignette to get rid of those to flatten out the image a bit more and get rid of these dark corners but for now we want to make that image bigger because we've cropped it so we go to view zoom and go to 50% and you can see how the background's quite grey and it's quite flat looking image so I want to do a contrast curve go to colour curves and you can see this line going through the histogram if we click up there which is represent the lighter kind of shades you can pull up those highlights and if we click down here with the darker shades we can then drag it down to darken the background but keep those highlights I think that's pretty good I mean the core's kind of a bit blown out on this but we can only do what we can do without doing layer masks and stuff like that if we click on split screen we get a before and after and I'm happy to keep that now I'm going to do one more iteration of that so go to curves pull it up at the top and down at the bottom there slight S curve and before and after it okay now I'm going to go back to levels now I'm going to check my different red, green and blues to see how they're sitting and they're all sitting in the same place but as you can see the colour is quite black and white so after a little bit more tweaking on the levels well that's blue let's go back to value I think that's good I'm now going to try and get some colour out of it so if I go to colour again and U chroma and then using this tab here I'm just going to click on that middle one where it says chroma you can see we're bringing out a bit of colour now at the expense of the background the background's gone a bit of a crazy colour uh, still want to do a bit more I think I'm going to use the arrow keys and just drag that up a bit. I think about there actually. Maybe a bit more. Yeah, there. I'm going to split screen that, show you the before and after. So you can see it's a bit greeny, black and white that side, and it's a bit blushing and magenta this side, but I'm going to address that in a moment. You can still see that our histogram is still sitting in that range it's not gone off the left it's gone all the way down to the bottom and remained on the left I'm gonna go OK on that and now I'm gonna address this background and the way I'm gonna do that is go to color levels again and now I'm gonna select that red channel and I'm gonna just drag that down Uh, about there before and after Let's move that down over there so you can see you can see that we've got rid of that red blush now that magenta okay it's basically that you know it's just levels curves a bit of contrast and uh, hue adjustments but what we can do is we can try and bring out some of these dust lanes a bit more and I'm going to go to colour again 
and I'm going to go to shadows and highlights and the highlight tab I'm going to just drop that down a bit and just try and bring out these dust lanes a bit more split screen that it's quite subtle but I do like to do that and I think I can afford to sort of get rid of a bit more grey in the background as well so let's go to levels again and we're on the value which is going to move everything as one bring that up a bit more split screen it yeah that's looking that's not looking bad now I'm just very slightly clipping at the bottom but to be honest I've got all that vignetting to take care of so there is going to be a tiny bit of black clipping when you've got vignetting but I've clearly not clipped it by a huge amount and uh, do you think we need to go a bit more on the contrast maybe um, let's go saturation pump that up a little bit that's too much <laughs> Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Split screen it. I mean, it's gone a bit blue on the background now. So if I OK that, go back to... You might be able to guess what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go back to levels, click on the blue, and just tweak that slightly. Yeah. And if you find it's a bit noisy looking, your image, you can zoom right in. Say view, we'll go to 100%, and now we'll go to filters, enhance, and noise reduction. Split screen, and OK. And this will take a moment to do its thing. But hopefully that will just clean up a bit of noise, make it look a bit smoother. Yeah, I think that will do, and we'll zoom back out again, 50%. So there, there we have a basic manipulated image. So we've gone from quite a, a dull looking colourless image to one that's arguably quite a lot better. And you can see I've blown out the core there, but there's nothing I can do about that with just having a single layer. I could lasso it and try and use the lasso tool there. And just draw around it and try and manipulate that bit but I'm not going to do that for this tutorial let's just leave that so we can see I've, I've barely clipped the left side of the histogram so we've not lost too much data color balance isn't too bad we've got yellow stars there and I'd like those to look a bit more bluish but it's not too bad the backgrounds fairly neutral. I'm sure if I, could, I spent a lot more time on it I could get more neutral but the, other than the blown out core the arms of the galaxy are looking pretty sweet I reckon. We've got some blues and some pinks in there and some dusty looking regions so I think that's quite good considering the basic level of image manipulation we've done but if you look in the corners you can see how it's quite dark and I've got a little trick to get rid of that and just flatten out the image even more so I'm going to export it into a different bit of software. Um, yeah. There you are. Just op simply opening it up in the Windows Viewer, and if I go to Edit on that, Filters, Enhance, you can see how it's kind of stretched it even more, and I can even out the corners by going on Adjust and grabbing the Vignette tool and dragging it backwards, you can see how that's bringing up those corners, it's going to even out that image a bit more, make it nice and flat. And we'll go back to filters, enhance, and I think that's overstretched. So now I've seen where that vignetting is by stretching it. I can bring that back down again now. 
There we go. That's made it a bit flatter. Cool that. Finished. 28. It's probably not, not my 28th version, but that's what I'll call it. So, if you ignore the core, just put your thumb over that bit. I don't think that looks too bad at all. There we have it. <laughs> if you want to do basic processing and you don't want to spend any money and you don't want to have a big learning curve, then just a few levels and curves and a bit of tweaking in GIMP can get you from... Where's the first picture? Can get you from there to there. Did I manage to? Now this was this isn't my first attempt at recording this video, and on my first attempt I managed to do this one, and you can see the core's a lot better controlled on this one. Honestly, this is the thing: when you process an image, every time you do it, it comes out differently. So you can see my first recording this video, it's, it's, uh, it's actually, other than being more noisy and not quite as colourful, the, the core is a lot better controlled. Oh, damn it. But I do like everything else about this image, it's just the core's rubbish. You can see I've done loads of different versions of this. So anyway, we've gone from there. To there and if you ignore that bit it's not bad right i think i better leave it there and stop rambling on uh, thanks for joining me if you've made it this far you've got a wicked attention span so congratulations be cool if you could join me on the next video that'd be awesome i'll leave a link to the deep sky stacker tutorial in the um, description or in the comments below so if you want to check that out first because that's kind of like the first step before you get to the image processing so that might be handy for you and Cool, remember to tell those clouds to sod off so you can get out there doing, some, doing astronomy and imaging. Catch you later.